Um, and uh, the roll call is um, uh, myself, uh, present, Lynn Kelly, uh, Bob Williford, Virginia DeSorga, um, Lindsay Rowe, and Robin Fordham. Present. Um, and uh, next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Did every did anyone have any questions or concerns about the minutes? Bob? And just a couple of corrections. The section that's talking about the Well Street property, 280 Well Street, it should read the doors of the accessible units have an actuator. It says doors of the actuator units should have an actuator. So I think our intent was that the accessible units would have some way to open the door. Sure. And then the, the announcement of the next meeting at the end of those minutes uh, should read remote via WebEx. Oh, as opposed to remote. <laughs> Correct, yes. Okay. I'm Thank sorry, you. as opposed to what? The, the next meeting, it said uh, remove during uh, via WebEx, and it should say remote via WebEx. Do I need to make a motion to uh, correct them? Yeah. Or? I want um, to move to make those corrections. Okay. Um, I think that you just can just make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Yes, as amended. I'll move oh. to accept the the minutes as amended. I, I would that. second that. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, so we have to. Um, and the treasurer's report is um, the treasurer's report is not done. I need to okay. uh, bump in here. You need, need to, to vote, vote on, on the approval of the minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, there was a motion to approve the minutes that was seconded. You just need a vote. Um, okay. I, I, uh, uh, Lynn Kelly, yes, approve the minutes as amended. I'll You're vote muted. in favor. And Bob is muted, so. Yes. Is that okay, Robin? Yep, that should be fine. Minutes approved okay. three to zero. Okay, so um, we can uh, uh, um, I, I move to have uh, the treasurer's report uh, done next month. And I'm going to apologize again. I did this last time. I got it the day after, and I was late. I'm all I can say to all of you is I'm sorry. Okay, I, I forgot okay. to do it in a timely fashion. Okay. Um, is that okay, Robin, or do do we need to do something else? I think that Lindsay, you just table it for the next meeting, right? No mo re motion required. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we'll table it for the next meeting. Okay. So um, on uh, open issues, I'm going to go over a few things and save the um, uh, uh, library plans for the end of this open sessions because the other things are fairly short. Um, under invitation for department heads, um, uh, I know, I, I think I made a suggestion 
last uh, month, but I, I did think that I might like to see if I could get someone from Mass Match to um, uh, come and speak to the group, because I think it would be helpful um, to know what is available. Uh, and I know that uh, Lindsay had let me know that um, uh, I think it's mass rehab uh, clients uh, have uh, free availability to, to mass match. So uh, I think that would be something that would be helpful. Um, Lindsay, did you have any other department heads that you had scheduled or? You had asked me to hold off for this month. I try to schedule them about a month in advance because if I schedule too far out, they say yes and then things pop up and then they're quickly, uh, that changes. Sure. So, um, yeah, happy happy to schedule. I know people are always excited to talk to you all, so. Okay. All right. Uh, so um, do you have a contact at Mass Match, Lindsay? Okay. Why don't we see if we can do that for the for the next one? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, and of course, now that I just said that, <laughs> it also made me realize that um, Bob had made a suggestion about having uh, Beth Giannini hmm. from uh is it concerning the frta um bob could you just uh fill that out for me right uh she had come to a traffic and parking commission meeting uh, i believe she's with the frta i'm sorry with the uh, FERCOG. Right. and uh said that they had reviewed and given some input to the plans for the Elm Terrace bus stop. Uh, and she said she was available, you know, to explain the whole bus stop issue to anybody who would want to know about it. So I, I think that she's tied into the housing as well as uh, transportation issues. So she might be someone that uh, if we continue to have questions about the Elm Terrace bus stop, that we'd want to uh, come to our meeting and, and talk to us a bit. I have some notes somewhere, but uh, uh, my desk looks sort of like uh, Lynn's desk. I saw Lynn's desk the other day. I don't, I don't recommend seeing Lynn's desk. <laughs> you should see my desk now. It looks oh, all right, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, apparently they, I think that the, uh, the FERCOG just, I don't know who asked them to weigh in on the moving the bus stop, but they apparently uh, decided to do that to give some input. They went to the uh, mass DOT, as I understand it, and got some ideas from them and then passed that on to the FRTA folks. So uh, a lot of us are interested in that bus stop being the best bus stop, I think. So, so, based on that, I think at this point, it, they should be a priority before mass match. Um, so, if Lindsay, again, do you have a, a connection to Beth? Beth, is it Giannini? Okay. I do. She's been at a couple. Okay. I know her. Yeah. Okay. I think that would be um, probably the, the best use of time to uh you know continue to deal with the frta information okay thanks um and then we could do the mass match um the next item oh, i'm sorry jenny did you have anything you wanted to say about the elm street bus stop you are muted <laughs> I'm on mute. Um, no, I did not. I did not have any any additional information on that. Okay. All right. I'll follow up with Laura Jordan and let her know that we're going to plan to uh, 
have uh, Beth, because I think it's important that Laura be part of that. I, I believe, I believe that the Parking Commission was being in touch with the FRTA too. I believe that that happened, and I think Laura knew more what was happening with that than I did. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, just as a, a quick announcement, um, the fair housing workshops have continued with Greening Greenfield. Um, mm -hmm. Bob has been attending some of them and um, has been our advocate at, uh, you know, including disability issues uh, or insisting that they, reminding them that that's a really important piece. Um, I have not been able to go to many of them, um, but I hope that maybe they'll have some recorded. They, may I? They, Jenny? They, they are, and they're, they're, they're fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've, I've been at two, but seen three. And um, um, boy, I love that that Champlain Land Trust. What they did um, that they tro to that is up by Burlington and St Albans. Total transformation of that community. And my son lives there. The demographics um, and the appearance there was so alike to begin with, and it is startling what has happened to that downtown. Um, the redevelopment of the downtown, it's, and um, the, every, I went up for the first time in 15 months this past weekend, part of why the treasurer's report wasn't here, it was gone for a few days. Every sidewalk in that town is done, every, every single sidewalk in that city, and um, uh, it's just amazing. Anyways, um, I think they're very worthwhile and Susan will gap to put it up. I can send the links, I think, to people if they need them. So. Okay. Good. Um, hello, Doug. I, Doug has joined us. <laughs> um, so uh, I think we've pretty much talked about the Elm Terrace bus stop at this point. And we'll just, um, as I said, we'll have, I think it will be helpful to have um, uh, Beth from the FERCOG join us and uh, see if we can uh, get one more advocate on board for that situation. Um, uh, I'm just gonna, as I said, I'm gonna skip over the library just for a minute. Um, just COVID-19 information, I know that most of you have probably seen it in the uh, newspaper, but the Johnson Center will be uh, closing down in a while and they'll be transitioning to, um, my understanding is the doctor's offices, CBS, Big Y. Um, is there going to be another site, Lindsay or Ginny? Um, besides that in the doctor's offices? My understanding is GCC will be a site. Is that your understanding, Jenny? Yes, yeah. Um, the, that's the plan. Friday's our last day at John's on. Well, there's one more day. They're gonna do one second, sh second shot series on June 9th. And then I guess the plan after that is uh, uh, FERCOG. Um, is going to be doing it at GCC as a yep. drive-through, and you know they're still they're looking for volunteers there. Okay. Um, I guess if there are any uh, folks who are with limited mobility, there are people doing home visits as well. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so the review of streets needing repair, 
Um, there are two uh, present issues. Um, the I know that Bob sent me a, is it the fix it, click it, or click it, fix it site? Um, somebody submitted a, a picture for an area at Court Square. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm the, only one I know, the only one I know is uh, Mill Street uh that the that the town is is already committed to doing okay um and so there there was a it was submitted to the dpw as a concern on court square and oh, then 311 it was a it was a th probably a 311 yeah is what they call yeah. it yeah okay and then the other one Bob uh, worked on, submitted photos. I went and looked at it and it's the uh, Franklin and Church Street area. And there are some markings in the street, uh, but we weren't sure what the, plan the plans were right now. Bob, did you want to uh talk about that at all yeah i had had an email from a resident on uh, franklin street who said it's very hard in a wheelchair to get out on the sidewalk and it's getting worse and worse each year that she lives in that area and i said well i'll, I'll come take a look with you and we'll just walk the ground i can share some photos if you'd like to see them would that be a good use of our time lynn um, I thought I had sent the photos out to people, um, but did I send them to you, Doug? Uh, I don't remember seeing any photos. Okay. I, I, Let me share them if I may. Okay. Sure. Uh, let's see. Wrong ones. Um, here we go. All right, so this oh, is yeah. the first. Nice. You can see those now. Yeah. yeah, that's the first obstacle we came to because we left her, where she lives, and the sidewalks were looking pretty good. And then we came to this patch of asphalt, and she said, "See," and I thought, "Well, yeah, big deal." But then she was having trouble getting up over the lip of the, the transition between this patch of asphalt and uh, and the rest of the street. And that's because Bob, it's an inch thick. There is no transition. Bob, is that, uh, is that on Pleasant Street or Franklin it's Street? Franklin Street. Okay. Franklin Street. Uh, um, the, uh, what's the street that, connect, that, that connects to that? Uh, um, well, it goes all the Main way down to, to Main Street, but uh, Church Street was what we were also looking at. Right. Church Street uh, was, a. Um, um, I, I walked that one, uh, and that one's a little, uh, that one's a little tricky, too, uh, going down towards the end where it meets uh, Federal Street. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, here's, here's a, like a 12-inch divot in the concrete. Yeah. These are the kinds of curb cuts that are at Church in Franklin. And as Len said, there are markings on here that either Banksy is loose in the city or DPW is marking to make a curb cut there. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the opposite part of that intersection. And we took a turn down Church Street and uh, things go from bad to worse pretty quickly. Uh, yes. Yeah, you can see the sidewalk here is is broken up in many, many parts uh, all down the sidewalk. And as you come down the uh, building entrance here, then you get to getting to the street, which would be difficult because this is not exactly a normal curb cut here. Yeah. Uh, this is Greenfield Pond, I think. 
<laughs> this is where the Soviet tanks uh, occupying the city drove across the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many different kinds of sidewalk we have at this intersection. I'm counting one, two, maybe three. You know, a half inch gap is uh, the max that we can permit on a sidewalk. And that's well over that. Another divot that would be a wheelchair hazard. And of course, these diagonal cracks, if you get your front wheels in that, you're in some trouble. Another large crack. You know, they put these, these relief uh, grooves in the sidewalk. So if the earth moves, it's supposed to break along that line. And that didn't work. Right. <laughs> Uh, I also I also noticed it on uh, the the uh, sidewalk on Wall Street in front of uh, uh, Mill uh, Mill House and uh, the one that uh, you know got paved um, uh, through my efforts uh, uh, a while ago. There, um, it's cracking or it's uh, it's got um, they put some. I, I can't think of the, it's uh, it's uh, like a spot um, pat, patch work on one of the grooves that is uh, it's it's wearing away. So now I think it's almost an inch, uh, um, not in front of the building, but uh, on the other side of the parking lot, because there's a there's supposed to be um, like one of those yellow. Um, uh, uh, I can't think of what they are uh, for um, handicapped use. Um, Maybe there's a, a warning pad. pad. A warning what? pad. Yeah. Um, a warning pad. Uh, there's one on one side, but not on the other, and that uh, I think that's where the problem uh, is. Is right along that way is the the crack is getting bigger or it is. The, the patch is being washed away by the rain, I guess, and by um, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, I guess uh, snow um, you know, snow removal has hit that area a couple of times and it's picked up the the, uh, the gravel or or the patchwork and uh, the that patch is growing. So I thought, I did put a three one one in on it uh, with Marlo, and uh, um, um, he, I, I believe he said he was going to take a look at it and uh, um, go from there. Personally, so, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jenny. Well, I think um, Doug and I both got an email <clears throat> from someone this week. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, the, this person actually happens to be my neighbor. Um, she had a bad fall on mm -hmm. High Street, um, right onto her face. Um, she's a couple of years older than me, she's like 73. Four front teeth and glasses. Um, and um, I sent that off to, you know, it went to all council and to the mayor. Um, I sent it to Marlo. I think it's actually a four. It's not one of the ones that was a priority to be done. I, I, I think that walking or traveling by any method, um, whether it be wheelchair or cane or whatever, I thought this is what people are doing now for socialization and exercise to get out, to be with others, is to walk. And the way that we are currently doing the sidewalks, a hundred thousand dollars a year, um, I will be dead and buried before this job is finished. And I think we should be taking a bond issue out to do the entire thing. I, I mean, there, you look at this, and I've seen this. It's these. There are other, so many other side streets. This part of Chapman Street that's terrible. Yep. Um, it, it. It. You know. The, the thing is, I said, I wrote to Director Warner and I said, 
if you put in more money, we'd vote for it. But I think maybe it's something that as a disability access commission that we could be advocating for um, not doing the sidewalks in the fashion that we're doing, 100,000 at a time, because it's, what is it, uh, $100 for uh, like about four, for about four or five feet, I think. I forget what the exact total is, but the way we're doing it, it's not going to solve the problem. I personally, at the senior center, when I was hosting the movies, I, I, there were two people that came and showed me their bruises. Now, none of these people are suing the town, including the person that wrote with their front teeth. They're, the, two of them were worried about other people and they just want the sidewalks fixed. But that can be a, a game changer. Your life can change in a heartbeat. Yes. A hip fracture or whatever. And we, we're we not going to solve the problem doing $100,000 a year. May I continue the tour? Yes. Please. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, Bob. Uh, to... Um, give credit where credit's due. I've crossed the street here and I'm looking back the way that I came and there is a brand new crosswalk across the street here, curb cut and a crosswalk with a, a pedestrian light. Uh, but that wasn't what I was trying to capture. So uh, I'm gonna go to the right here past the church. So there you can see some of the uh, the varieties of surfaces we're talking about right. in this area right here. Doug was just talking about snow plows. I'm guessing yeah. this was not a wheelchair that took out this big chunk of concrete, but that was somebody sure. trying to plow snow. And oddly enough, this is the handicapped entrance just around uh -huh. the corner from that area uh, <laughs> to the church uh -huh. with a gap that's more than a half an inch to get across. Not sure how wide that door is objects in your mirror may be closer than they seem. But look at all <laughs> these nasty patches to get to the handicapped entrance of the church. And my guess is that over the years, this deteriorated and the town was perhaps not helping. So they bought some bags of quick patch and they fixed it themselves, I would guess. I have fallen I have fallen in that exact area because I had a meeting uh, uh, for the nurses in that in the back of that church and I've I fell right in that area. Ouch. Continuing back toward uh, Franklin Street, just a mix. I mean, this is the street on the left and this is what passes for the sidewalk. There's a driveway here. Again, we switch from asphalt to cement with a pretty tall step to get up onto the cement. Now we're back at Franklin Street and I'm gonna turn right and go down toward Main Street. Again, pretty tall steps to get over. This is the driveway that goes down to Spine and Sport, but let's see if I can make this bigger. No trespassing. This is a private driveway because it serves the apartment building that's there. You're not right. supposed to use that, but I'm guessing that people do, and that's one of the reasons it's in such bad shape. Right. Uh, right. The library's lot is going to connect to the parking lot that's back down there, and there's a sign at the other end of this that says, no trespassing. This is a private driveway. Be that as it may, if we keep on going down the street, you can see that the drive is in horrible shape. Now we're looking back the other way. Uh, the person in the wheelchair down here was my guide. She couldn't get across this. So she went all the way back down to the 55 entrance to get on the street and come back down to meet me. Doug was talking about trees in the side. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is I've seen further those, down. Yeah. We were down about here, and now we've come toward Main Street, and that's a problem. There are ways that the U.S. Access Board talks about building the sidewalk around a tree, but this is parking for the apartments that are there. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the Reed apartment building right there, I believe. So then. Bob, we is that part of property? Yes. So it would have to be taken by eminent domain. I think so, yeah. 
and I'm sure they would not be happy because there's not a lot of parking there. Uh, turning back around and heading toward uh, Main Street, we get to the post office. And this is where you learn lessons about low bidders in the US government. <laughs> Notice that this is one kind of brushed aggregate here with a big honking patch. <laughs> Not sure what this is, Paleolithic yeah. something or other. Uh, <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah, that is pretty nasty. Uh, my, my guide had to go out in the street to get around that. Uh, this is actually looking back the way we came. And we start with a curb here and some more nasty pitted uh, this looks like Mr. Roboto in the shadow here. It's just me holding up my iPad to take a picture. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've got a whole different kind of pavement here. The street is off to the left. Uh, not too sure about that. And then we get to the sidewalk. You can see my uh, my guide's wheelchair here. There's just enough room on a good slab to get through there. You would, couldn't pass somebody else in a chair. And then the slabs along the right side this is the post office on the right side, are right. universally falling apart. And there's a big bush in the in the uh, way as well. So Cynthia, uh, we miss you. <laughs> and there's a look, you know, down down toward Main Street with broken slab, cracks, hard way to go. And I said to my my guide, I said, you know, people are going to say, why don't you just go to the other side of the street? This is the other side of the street, just one shot that I took. And you can see that the driveway that this sidewalk crosses, the sidewalk is no longer level. It slopes with the driveway. You can imagine what it's like trying to take a chair across here and you will end up in the street, almost guarantee it. Uh, and then this That's is- That's the bad. same thing that, uh, yeah. That as uh, happens uh, that has happened on Arch Street is uh, there are a couple of of, uh, of uh, uh, problems there where it kind of get, get, uh, rolls towards the the, uh, the 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 parking lots there kind of slope towards the uh, the street um, and, and the sidewalk so they. Uh, uh, those they they when they did some partial work on Arch Street, uh, they they did a couple of parking lots, but uh, it's not it's not all the way down through um, uh, all the way through Arch Street. Uh, it, I think it goes to the Arch and then stops. <clears throat> but there's a couple of driveways past the Arch that. Uh, Kind of lean in towards the uh, the street um, that a person with a wheelchair would uh, would would have some problems. So, so overall, um, I'm seeing. Um, I also took my husband in his wheelchair to the post office, and we did a little thing there, a uh, little um, recon as well. And um, yeah, it it is is. Uh, uh very impossible for a regular chair and um and for as jenny mentioned for people um so i i like the idea of um presenting that as an overall bond issue um, um Lindsay, do you, we talked last week about Marlowe's schedule for the summer. Um, are any of these streets on the agenda? I'm not sure. He said they were still reworking the schedule. I believe the counselors um, may have received the capital committee, which explained what he's looking for for the following year um, and mm -hmm. include the maps of um, Kind of the conditions, the current conditions of the sidewalk. As you all know, the sidewalks can change almost immediately, right? You get a little bit of rain, and then the water goes under, and the whole thing cracks. So you get a whole, you know, you get a new tree that's decided that the root is just going to pop up, and it cracks. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the thing that that the counselors both spoke to, which is 
it's just been chronically underfunded. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we spent $40,000 last year on sidewalks and as Councilor Disorder noted, I think it's $150 per block. So if you just keep counting and you just go 150, 150, 150, you start adding up real quick and you, you can't just hire a contractor to do like a couple of blocks. They wanna do $200,000 worth of work, right? They wanna come in, bring in their huge crews and fix you know, the whole thing at once. They're not, you can't really get people to come bring all of their equipment and everything to make it make sense. Um, and I think that that's part of what we're seeing is just a long history of defunding this uh, and not prioritizing it. And there are a lot of other issues in the city and that's, you know, I think, can the CDA figure out a way to bump that as an issue? And, you know, I think that's maybe the, maybe the conversation because I do think DPW would, if they were fully funded and staffed appropriately, I think they totally take this as an as an issue and they really want to bring all of these sidewalks up to code. I don't think that we're, I don't think you're getting resistance in that department. I don't think that that's no. the yeah. issue. So I think probably it's a question of figuring out how do you explain this to other people? It's a question of what, what's prioritized. I, I think Marlo does a fabulous job and always finishes whatever money is allotted his way. He goes out and gets the job done. It has been 40,000, 50,000. This year was a big deal that we gave 100,000 to. It. And I thought that probably might take care of um, uh, one section of Church Street. Do you, you know what I'm saying? And I thought- I Three streets. Three streets. Uh, three streets. Three streets. How many and streets they, do we have? They couldn't be long <laughs> streets. That's all I could say. And and I know that sometimes they'll, uh, I believe that sometimes if they're doing something and it's in the uh, economic, what is it? Econ what do you call it? Economic areas. Ec um, there's four, a couple of areas in the city where you can use the, the CDBG funds for that. Sometimes we can use some of that money, but I think the approach is off. I think that we have to, I think we have to push more for that. And um, this is a senior, it's, a, it's an aging population. This is what people are gonna be doing is walking if they're able, if that's their method of travel. And, and the person that I know that fell, it was just on a, one of those things that Bob captured it was like a one inch thing and you capture your heel, um, the older we get, we all have a little bit more deficits. I think it it, it has to be, you know, it's maybe instead of, a, well, not instead of something, but in addition to, to, we have to advocate for that as a group, I think. Okay, well- but That um, was a great sl slideshow with a very humorous, um, <laughs> narrating that I could never have done. Um, mm -hmm. And that was fabulous. And I'm thank you for presenting that. And uh, I'd like to hold on to Bob's slideshow and use that as part of our uh, advocacy program. If that's I can okay. send everybody a link that lets them mm -hmm. see that in the cloud on the, on the internet. And then they could share that link if they have somebody that they think needs to see it. Uh, there's not really a, a narrative other than what I've said uh, in just going through the slides. So maybe I need to work on that and put some some better descriptions. Uh, there is other software, something called Google Photo. And if I look at that on my iPad, if I look at, at the pictures on my iPad, I can scroll down and it pops up a map to show me exactly where the photo was taken. It can show me the other photos that are in the area. Uh, it turned out that one of them was a picture of my wife getting her hair cut at the beauty salon. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's on the internet, so we're fine. Uh, but, but I couldn't make a Google photo work on, on my Windows computer today. So, But maybe okay. I can annotate some of those to, to say exactly where it is and, and what you're looking at. Okay. All right. Well, that will continue to be another... Um, major uh, project for us. Um, but the streets continue to be continue to be an issue. Okay, um, 
let's start with the library because I don't, I know we're going to need some time for that. So, um, uh, how do we want to do this, Bob? Did you? Well, I, I tried to get a copy of, uh, the five separate issues to everybody uh, as a PDF file. I know that depending on how big your screen is or whether you have a printer, sometimes that's a little difficult to do. I can pop them up and again, we can share and, and go through it. Uh, and, and I'll make notes about what people uh, disagree with or have additional comments on. You know, I would say I am new to this whole ADA universe. Uh, so a lot of what uh, I took to Lynn and we talked about it's just based on me saying that ain't right and then trying to find the references uh, in the standards in the guidelines to say this is what's right anything that is not permitted is prohibited stop doing that so I tried to put those elements into the what I saw as the issues um, so we can go through, but if, if somebody wants to call, call a timeout and say, Bob, you are completely sniffing at the wrong tree on that one. Uh, that is not an issue that we care about or that you're going to solve or uh, you've misunderstood the whole thing. So with that, you want to take a look at the this issue starting at issue one? Yep, I do. And I, I would just like to say, don't sell yourself short. You were just yes. what we needed here. Um, yes. You bring the gifts to the table that you cannot imagine. Um, the screen, the ability to screen share at a meeting is something that I lack, and it is so helpful. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Let me see if I can make that happen. Let's see. Okay, so this is issue one, and I know that uh, handicapped parking spaces, we have talked about again and again and again in regards to the library in this commission and outside of it. Uh, when I was early on involved in this, uh, I'm a retired librarian, and so uh, the director asked me to be on the library committee, which was kind of a precursor to the building committee. We listened to public comment. People again and again said, you need to accommodate the people who are disabled. They have horrible parking. They can't get in the library, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we got very good feedback from the community saying, yes, we want this to be an exemplar. We want other towns that are building libraries to come and say, look, here's the way a good library should look when they see our new library. Look at how easy it is to get in. Look at the great parking. And then when we get to this 100% design review, the answer is, oh, the requirement is really only for three parking spaces because we have less than 75 parking spaces. The standard says, oh, then three, you must have three handicap slots. And oh, by the way, one of those has to be a van slot. So it's not an addition to the three, it's one of the three. So this is what we're looking at, but what I found in looking at uh, this particular issue beyond there not being enough is that this area down here, which is in the south, the, the main library building is over here on the right. Do you have to cross the street to get to the library? This is the handicapped parking that you pull into. And there is nothing to get out of on this south parking slot here. The other things with an access aisle on the driver's side, this sidewalk is level with the access aisles and the parking. There's a ramp here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, surely I can do this. In here, there's a ramp. And then another ramp here to get you to the crosswalk that goes across here and a ramp on this side to get you up into the sidewalk and into the building. But down here, 
there is nothing. And I would say, um, that this number 6.14, that's the number of feet between the edge here, and this is the building of the old library right here. Kind of hard to see if it's where the children's board book room is. So now if they had another four feet of sidewalk here, we're now two feet away from the building. I have to think there are some codes that say you need to be able to get fire equipment, emergency equipment to the back of the building. Uh, this up here, uh, kind of the ghost image is the handicapped ramp that exists now to take you down to the back entrance to the library. Mm -hmm. So this parking basically goes from the very edge of the building to where the handicap ramp is now. Uh, if you recall, if, if you're standing at the top here and you want to go down the ramp to here, you do go down quite a bit. So I don't know if they're going to level out this parking or exactly what's going to happen. Because they don't show this as any kind of a ramp or a steep uh, jump off. But that is the sidewalk to the back of the library. It then continues off to the left here and goes down to the connection to the Greenfield Savings Bank. Uh, let's see. Okay, so, so, so that's I, one. They they need to have some solid surface there. Mm -hmm. And and one of again, just in terms of the amount of parking spaces, uh, one of the things that um, Bob brought up is that we don't know what's going to happen. Who's going to have this new? Who's going to take over the old library? But it may be that these handicapped spots may get used by them um, or used by people, you know, parking and going to the um, theater or something like that. Um, right. So it, it's just, um, anyway, um, well, go ahead. We have every right to say that we need, we want two more. Mm -hmm. We we just we can just say that that if yeah. this is that that's unacceptable. We need two more. Can you go back up a little bit, Bob? Um, go just go down, I guess. Right here. Oh, you can't see where I'm pointing. <laughs> okay. Uh, see where there's a whole bunch of other spaces right here. Um, with not with yeah. the, whole, the whole. Why don't we ask for two right here in the middle? Uh, in this stretch here. That's to the north of the parking. What the architects have said is that, oh, it starts to slope. The ground starts to slope right here. Right where? So you get beyond the acceptable slope for ADA approved parking. Now, I think early on, we also said that we could follow the example of the John Zahn Center. Uh, Hope McCary was was the brains behind the idea that there be parking that's not specifically ADA parking, but it's for our mobility challenged friends or something. So yeah, you wouldn't have access lanes. You wouldn't have um, I don't know the, the things that make these down here accessible parking, but you would be close. How about the first one? How about the very first this one? This one here? Yes. So you can, yes. can jump off onto this pad, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do have another uh, image that suggests that if you move this whole shamuli up uh, into this area, you could probably add another parking space and bring the sidewalk down here because the entrance to the library is right here. So we've got the crosswalk going up here and then you have to come back to the entrance of the library. Yeah, it's a little bit squirrely for these people who are coming from, I don't know where, uh, Federal Street probably, and there is some traffic that comes that way that they have to come behind the handicapped parking across the sidewalk that's now here to the entrance. Not sure. Let me let me go down and show you the uh, 
the image that I pasted in and sort of made up. And this, by the way, is a picture of the corner of the building. So the handicapped parking starts six feet from the corner of this as designed. Subtract four feet. Yeah, it gets a little tight. And and the edge of the building is basically the midline of that parking, those parking slots. So they're out this way some and then back this way some. And there's the handicap ramp all the way down there. So they stretch quite some distance. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm making anybody nauseous with this, please uh, let me know and I'll try <laughs> to do better, give you more warning. Yeah, this is just a cut and paste that I did uh, to take one of the parking spaces and add it up here with an access lane. So now that island that was there is gone uh, and the sidewalk wraps around down here to the entrance to the library, which is right here. Mm -hmm. And may I ask how wide is that sidewalk? This sidewalk, I believe, is four feet. Now we're we're into the same problem that we're very close to this building down here. So the answer may be we can't do that, or that there's a traffic hazard by not having an island here to turn that corner. I don't know. Uh, the other issue, which is the the next. Uh, issue too, yep, yep. but you sure. can see it here, is that this whole sidewalk and all this parking, there are no curb cuts. There's no way to get from this parking onto this sidewalk. And that's true of the whole rest of the parking lot. There are three curb cuts. There's uh, one, two, well, I'm sorry, I'd have to go back to the other. There's one here to get up on the sidewalk. There's one to get down to the street. And there's one here to get back up on this sidewalk after you've gone through the crosswalk. None of the rest of the parking lot has any curb cuts. How can that be? You'll see it in the in the next one. But you know, uh, the, one of the questions I had about this rant, if you will, about not having enough handicapped parking, we're going to send this to the planning folks and say, here's what we think. Should I try to move the, the rant about it being not enough parking to begin with to the top of the list and then talk about, but these parking spots need to have these corrections made? I don't know. Uh, I'm not trying to hide the, the debate that we've had in the past about these not being enough. And I don't know whether we may be in transmitting this thing to the planning folks and whoever else it goes to, it may be just in, in whatever the cover email or letter is, we can say. The three parking slots were the required minimum, minimum. Right. Or, or are we giving up on that idea and just addressing what they're saying now is the 100% design. This is the, we've done everything that you've asked us to do, design, and it costs big money now to change things. And that's true about all five of these issues, I'm sure. Uh, I'm going to interrupt for a minute. What's the feeling in the group? Um, I, I feel that it's still worth advocating for more spots because I feel that it was something we were advocating for from the very beginning. This is not a surprise at the end of this plan. If they come back and say, no, this is a done deal. This is all you've got. Then we've got these other suggestions. I mean, we'll add these other suggestions. Um, that's just my feedback. Doug, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, certainly the you know we need more uh, parking spaces. I you know that that's. Uh, 
that's a good one to fall back on. But I also think the the curb cuts uh, are are al almost equally as important as enough parking spaces because you're you're not going to be able to get down. Uh, um, off the sidewalk without uh, without a curve cut. Yeah, yeah I think so. No. Yeah, well, I think there'll be some better illustrations on the, the second one, which deals specifically with uh, the lack of curb cuts. I would say we could add in here, I suppose, or maybe we save it for a later discussion if they say no that's how many handicap slots you get we could say now that there is a handicapped ramp to the patio maybe that lower area which seemed like a horrible place to put handicap parking when there was no ramp back there and you'd have to go all the way halfway up the building uh, to come in the west entrance if that is truly going to be an entrance for people who are mobility impaired, then maybe they should do some planning to put handicap slots there. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think we've actually heard them say that, yes, that is going to be the third entrance to the library. Because early on, the librarians were saying, oh, that, that's really the children's, an extension of the children's area, that patio there. So yes, we need emergency exit capability from there, but no, people shouldn't come in back there. And, and I have some sympathy as a former librarian that you then have to have staffing to keep an eye on people to make sure that they're not carrying materials out of the building or you know, stealing chairs, whatever. Uh, but if indeed that's going to be an open third entrance to the library that's used all the time, then maybe that's one of the handicapped entrances. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't know whether that's something we put in here uh, to, to put that thought in their mind that they can say, oh, we don't need to put more handicapped parking up there. We can just stick it down here at the bottom or if we want to just keep it in a hip pocket for if they come back and say, oh yeah, no, you just get the three. Hmm. Um, uh, a question? Yes. Yeah. Jenny, you know more about this process than I do. Um, so usually, once we give feedback, is there going to be a back and forth or it's just kind of an under advisement, then they make the changes or don't? Most of the time, most of the time they make the changes. So that's why I said you can say that. Mm -hmm. um, we've reviewed that and um, due to the demographics of Greenfield, the aging population, we know that this will not be enough you need to put in more. This is the feeling of the uh, disability condition. And generally, it's honored. I, I would say, though, that we, we oh, thought that we had that agreement and we didn't. Right. We can be a little bit more forceful with that. I'm happy to call Ed Berlin. <laughs> um. You know, I'm also tempted to include this because it really is incredibly detailed and well documented. Um, but it also feels like if we do that, then we're giving them the out to um, not uh, not try to make the effort to include more spaces. Does that make sense? Well, I think the problem is that they really don't have room to add more spaces where they have the three spaces uh, because mm -hmm. the ground starts to slope there and they're very close to the building. So uh, that is the closest you can get to an entrance. It does mm -hmm. have to cross the traffic uh, lanes, 
which is not at all good. You know, if we had a magic wand, I would say the handicap parking should be right off of Main Street. Uh, the sidewalks, the curb cuts, whatever, uh, can come right very close to the front door of the library on Main Street. And maybe there's a curved drive and a place to put five handicap parking spaces. But at this point, they have designed a beautiful front patio with plantings, with seating. Uh, I don't know if there's a, a chocolate fountain or anything, but it, it's it's a very nice place. And if you say, uh, we'd like that back for handicapped parking, I, I think we're too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm, and I think I'm hearing that you would like to include the uh, statement that we're unhappy with only having three spots and perhaps something like, and we're willing to work with you on where the others could go. Yeah. But for these slots, this, these are the problems. And then basically the same paper that I did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would say that, that the deadline that we got was to send this to planning tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is why I, I thought it was important to include the work that you've done. Okay. Um, All right. Is it, you want to look at issue number two, which was the curb cuts? How are we doing for time? I just want, okay, we're good. Okay. So we've got the curb cuts at, actually there is a curb cut at the entrance to the building, of course, or, uh, to the parking area on Main Street. So that's another curb cut. Uh, but except for this uh, handicap parking, there is nothing back here in this parking area or back here in this parking area, which I'm saying might work out as handicap parking because you just go around the corner here. Here's the ramp that takes you up onto the patio and mm -hmm. in the door to the library. So maybe this is potentially handicap parking space, but there are no curb cuts. There are no sidewalks down here, except for this one here that runs along the west side of the building. Mm -hmm. So you can can get into the the west entrance. Uh, you can get to the patio through some stairs and the ramp back here. But there's nothing that's shown on their plans that says, and you get up on this island and you walk through here and use a crosswalk because there is no crosswalk on the drawing either down in this lower parking area. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what that all means. Uh, it's as if they solve the handicap problem up here by giving us three parking spaces and everybody else is able-bodied or has a flying car or wings and they're good. Mm. Um, so the guidance on the 2010 ADA standard says a required accessible route, which is any of this from the parking to get to the building is a accessible route, must be uh, accessible. And if it crosses a curb, a curb ramp must be provided. So anytime you're coming from parking back here, here, if you're going to get on this sidewalk, you need to have a curb cut, curb ramp here. Don't know what the rest of the definition fits for the rest of this. Uh, again, mm -hmm. there's a sidewalk across this south side Excellent. by the handicap yeah. parking. Yeah. I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion. So yes, we're just going to send that back to them and say, oh, that looks great. And you just have must miss this part of the uh, CMR, whatever it is, CMR, whatever, where you don't have the curb cuts in. I'm sure that you intended to put those in because they're absolutely a requirement. You can phrase it like that. We could, yes. All right. Yes. So that looks wonderful with the parking. You just missed this, and that's a requirement. Because well, I, you know, I've actually uh, seen this happen in the in the justice system. I mean, people. You have some architects that are great at this, and then you have other people that 
they they're going by the whole um you know like the housing code and they forget cmr 20 isn't it cmr 20 um and they sort of forget this part so you, you were just going to say that looks great but you forgot that that that's a good way to make it less confrontational yeah you know, i looked at a lot of plans i looked at all the drawings that i could get to and um uh, nothing shows curb cuts down there yeah and i'm happy yep. to follow up after you send this in and talk to ed okay yeah I, i've been a recent advisor i'm a, I'm a frequent advisor of ed berlin whether he wanted to hear from me or not <laughs> <laughs> I do mention that there's no crosswalk uh, from the lower area uh, parking over to the sidewalk. So it seems like if somebody decides to put one in for a safety reason, maybe, that uh, it'll have to have curb cuts. You know, my thought was that these islands, these big uh, eye bars here, I guess there's really only one of them, would have a sidewalk down the middle of them. There are plantings, there are trees and things that are in there to shade the parking areas. So there's probably not a sidewalk that goes down there. I'm not sure what you shovel when it snows. Mm. But those right. could be a little problematic when they take them out of the uh, senior center. And for the very reasons that you've pointed out. Okay. Let's see. So I don't know why this says 521 CMR 22 instead of issue number three. This is the uh, the front of the library. This is the driveway in 24 feet wide. The library building is over here and going back and all the parkings here, uh, accessible parkings back over here. But the curb ramp that they're showing does not match the curb ramp designs that are on their plans. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, and they're showing it coming off, I, I think they call this an axial curb cut. So you come off, not in the direction you want to go, but in the middle of it, and then you change direction and go the way you want to go. So off the middle and then down here. Uh, that ain't the way that uh, the ADA standards read, because they say it should look like this. This is the crosswalk going one way and the crosswalk going the other way. There's a four foot pad, four foot square pad that has to be at the bottom. And outside of the wings, there has to be two feet for pedestrians uh, who meet the, the original definition because they are using their feet to get onto the crosswalk without tripping on these wings or having to go down the ramp. So, not quite sure how to sugarcoat that. Um, some more about there being a requirement for curb cuts. This is uh, actually an intersection, an illustration where they're not coming off the middle of the curve. There's a separate walk. So if this were Main Street, you'd be going across to the church and then you'd be crossing the driveway here uh, we don't have another crosswalk here, but so just sort of letting them know and pointing out that there's not a curb cut at all. This is the post office on the right and their driveway going through here and the sidewalk just comes straight on through. There is no curb cut because it's the same level all the way through and the street is, is shallow enough that you just come right up over the sidewalk. And this is the current parking area. That's the La Petite Cafe there. Sidewalk just goes straight across. There is no curb cut. Now, a little further down toward the library, the driveway that goes back to the fire station, there are mm, sort of curb cuts. They don't look very good, but, but they do exist. But again, the sidewalk is so close to the drive level that it's not probably more than two or three inches of a jump to get there. Hmm. So uh, I think I'm just trying to tell them that this is not an acceptable ADA ramp because it takes mm -hmm. up the whole sidewalk. Yeah. 
And if there's a way to, to make that a polite, oh, I'm sorry, but you missed the 24 inches on each side. Right. right. Just say, I mean, it, it looks great. It, it looks great. It just, you have to just do it this way and then send them the pictures. If you need any questions, you can, you can call us. But you have yeah. to do it this way. Yeah, I basically say at the end that if, if they can design this so the sidewalk is level, that is the most accessible curb cut that there is. None. Yeah. You just wheel on across that. Now, how that gets marked as a crosswalk so people don't think you're fair game, I'm not sure. But I'll point out that there's no crosswalk marking here mm. and there's no crosswalk marking here. Mm. There's one down at the fire station, but those guys tend to be in a hurry. So, yeah, I, you know, I bet they don't even stop for pedestrians. <laughs> so anything I, I need to change about this one? Okay. Issue four is no. the interior. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. That's fine. Okay. I'm, I'm issue no. four is the interior staircase, and and I would have to say that this is where my understanding of the ADA is is a little weak. Basically, this is a top view of the staircase between the lower floor and the upper floor. So you come down from upstairs. There's a handrail all the way down here, and then the stairs go down here. Handrail wraps to the wall as it should. Uh, come down the stairs here, you turn left to go down the stairs this way. There's a handrail there. Uh, it terminates at the floor, so it's fine. It it's meets all the code. But here in the middle, if you come down this way and want to cross and go this way, there's no rail. There's nothing. And if you're not paying attention and you decide to just go diagonally, you will surely fall down this corner of the stairs. It's what's called a grand staircase. And it is permitted right. in- it's, Or it's, a grand uh, fall. Yeah, yeah, Niagara Falls, Great Falls. Uh, so I'm thinking that's a fail, that they need to just make this one stair that comes down and the steps are here, one, two, three, four, and you're done. And if you want to go this way, you have to come out here first and then go that way on the level floor. Mm -hmm. there, there are some exemptions to this for residential uh, remodeling. So if you have a two-story house that already has an elevator, then you don't have to meet the standards of having continuous handrails and all the rest. But it's weird. I only found one picture of such a thing on the whole internet. Not that I browsed the entire internet, but you know, here's the side view. There's also a problem in that some of the stairs are outside of the rail. So unless they want these to be display shelves, you're going to have small children who bet each other that they can go up the stairs on the outside of the rail. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and then they won't be able to get over the uh, the glass see through railings there, but maybe somebody will take pity on them. Uh, there's another picture that shows the, the same thing, I think. So here's a side view of the coming down or the part that goes that way. This is a, a view from down at the foot of these stairs. So the stairs come down here way and then you go this way. And I am asking them to confirm that this is one of those solid uh, tempered glass panels because it just mm -hmm. looks like it's clear. They, they have kind of a bottom line on these other panels and there's no bottom line on this one. I think it's just a, a Scrivener's error, if you will. But I do say that I think they believe that they can do this because they have an elevator. Right, right. And I quote the uh, Department of Justice's guidelines that say, Stairs that are part of a required means of egress, uh, then the 20, 2010 standards apply and 
there are a few stairways that are not a required means of egress. So most building codes would not would say that just because you have an elevator does not mean that you can do whatever the heck you want with the stairway. And, mm -hmm. and there is no real purpose to this, except it looks fancy, would mm -hmm. be my take on it. I would ask them to clear that with the MOD or with somebody to say, are you sure that, that we accept that's a, a way to do it? Mm. I don't specifically say that in this issue paper, but uh, as Lindsay says, is there some dialogue back and forth when uh, uh, Mr. Tuar gets this tomorrow? Is he going to say, I don't know. I think I'll ask the MOD. Might not occur to him. So maybe we need to put that thought in his head. Charles, yeah. Charles is wonderful. Yeah. Charles Roberts, who's the um, he's the chair of planning board. He's an architect and he knows he's great with this. Okay. They're not having another planning board meeting though for another whatever. But you know what? I would say I would ask that um he bring your things to the attention of Charles Roberts. Because when I looked at the, I'm, I just watched part of that building committee meeting, and they're a great group of people. And I didn't see, I'm just trying to remember those faces from yesterday. I didn't see an architect in the middle of that. Maybe there was one that I didn't know. But Charles Roberts, who's the head of planning, asked, just say that the disability access asked the Charles Roberts review um, and, con you know, um, that you're sure he'll concur with you, but that he review it also, because Eric would, doesn't have the same areas of expertise and probably passion about that that Charles made. So that would be, or maybe, I don't really know how, maybe he has the same passion. I probably just spoke like I do a lot of the time. But anyways. Um, okay. So you don't think that we should proactively put Charles Roberts on uh, a CC to the well, email okay. that goes to Eric? Yeah, that would be good. That's do you good. have his email address? I do. If if you would send it to me, Jenny, that would be good. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it now before I forget. No, all right. Lynn, is that all right with you? Yeah, that is fine. Okay. That sounds like an excellent solution. All right. Okay, are we close to uh, just, uh, just the last to... one was about handrails and and uh, in this ramp area that this is the patio in the back. Oh. Let me pump mm -hmm. that up a little bit. For some reason, the very top part of it is labeled a walk. And it's a one in 30 uh, ratio. And then the ramp is a one in 12 ramp uh, uh, ratio, just as a standard handicapped access rate, uh, ramp is. There's a four foot flat thing in the corner, so that's fine. It doesn't look like it's too steep, but I wondered about why this is a walk and this is a ramp. And I'm concerned because the ADA standards for accessible design has an advisory that says, oh, if you have a walking surface with a running slope less than one in 20, you don't need any stinking handrails. I, I don't believe that they're trying to save money on handrails, but I would like their assurances that there will be handrails because that is a handicapped access ramp. You can right. go and walk, uh, but j just to get it in writing, so to speak, that, yeah, there will be rails because uh, if you've been in airports that the terminal slopes down pretty pretty uh, abruptly. People are scared to walk on it without having a rail to hang on to. So that was kind of a minor thing, but I think it may be important. It is. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it, it was just curious when you looked at it, why they changed it from, why it's called a walk there and, and a ramp in the other spot. Okay. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think originally when Lynn and I sat and looked at the plans, we said, we should ask him, why is it that way? And I don't know that that's really the question that we want to ask. ask. We don't really right. care why they did that. Maybe this this uh, cement block wall comes in that length, so they decided the ramp had to match it. Not sure. Uh, I, I'm hopeful that they weren't doing that to try to do a wink, wink, and say, "Man, we can save money on handrails because we'll pay for them one way or the other." That's it for the the five issues. Well done. Thank you. Thank great. you so much. Thank you. Um, so are you going to, you'll send this in tomorrow? I can do that or I can send it to you, Lynn, and, and have you send it to, to Eric. Um, and I, you know, I'm I don't not have sure. A, These are, sorry. I don't have a problem with you sending it. All right. Um, I my, only, my only thought was that, um, we don't seem to have the um, the Commission on Disability Access um, head uh, for stationary. So I was I, I was thinking that this should at least, you know, have whatever correspondence we send with this should have our official logo on it. Um, is there a way Robin can send that to you, Bob? Don't know. I didn't know we okay. had an official logo. So, uh, I just sent Lindsay. We have official letterhead, yeah. If you want me to put it's... something on official letterhead, I can do that and send it back. Okay. I did send Lindsay and Bob Charles's information. So, however, I think it will look better if it comes from the commission. And if that can actually go through, I don't know how that works, but Lindsay or Robin or whatever, however is the easiest for somebody to, to do that? That's certainly not easy for me. <laughs> so write, yeah, write up the letter, uh, submit it to me, I'll put it on letterhead and I'll PDF it and send it back to you and then you can sign it and submit it. So Lynn can sign it and I can go retrieve it and scan it or something to email it to him. Or do you want us to send this all as printed copies? I, I would just think that they would appreciate having them electronically so they can move them around to whoever they think yeah. is in it. Yeah. yeah. So Robin, if, if you could send it to Lynn and maybe and to me, and then Lynn, you and I could get together maybe to say exactly what you want to say. Maybe you just want to say, here it is. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's It really should probably be your signature on it. Okay, okay. And I don't know how to do that electronically, but uh, I know where you live. So uh, we can, can get some letterhead with your signature and uh, print it out. Uh, and then I'll scan it in and make it part of the package. Okay. Okay. And and do we need to do that? Does that have to be in tomorrow? Is that? That's that's my understanding. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Um, I have another one more thing on this, just that we should know because I did watch the last meeting, and Ed Berlin was in charge, kind of like in the the design phase, and now that it's into the construction phase, it will be Tim Farrell, who's the actual in charge person, just for everyone's edification. So he may be the person that we need to be bothering. Okay. So should okay. we be sending copies to them as well, or? Um... You know, I'm thinking, I know that there's some bureaucracy involved, but uh, maybe the less filtering we have, the better. So if Eric shrugs his shoulders and says, no, no, I'm sure they took care of that and crosses something out and does not forward it on, 
Yeah, they I, already I, have I, in their hands. I make sure we show to everyone because I've I've noticed that that's a good thing to do. That's all I'll say. Okay. Okay. How is that? Yep. <laughs> Send it to everybody. Okay. Okay. Um, so I've got a few more things. Um, I, I'm happy to move them, uh, to table them. Uh, none of them are, uh, you know, uh, urgent in terms of a, a timeline. Um, but I'll just quickly say that, um, Bob went to the Human Rights Commission and um, went to their meeting. And um, it's pretty clear that there's probably some overlap um, between the two commissions. So we're, we're going to, at some point soon, um, check in with them. They're putting together a complaint form and we have complaint forms for the CDA, but the ones that I have are strictly for uh, architectural barriers. So um, we, I'll table that right now and bring it up at the next meeting. Um, but I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, and uh, um, Robin, uh, suggested that I um, bring in the term the un unanticipated item. Um, do we need to vote on that or is that just the term I can use? No, there's no, no nothing to vote on. We just wanted to discuss the issue of the alternate to the commission, right? Yeah. So, um, Celeste uh, has notified, um, uh, Robin sent me an email today, that she works during the day, so she really cannot attend a meeting at one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so we may need, I mean, we will have to look for another alternate who can uh, work within our time frame. So it's I will any... send uh, Celeste just a note that she, it appears she's been officially confirmed that so she has to officially resign before that position can be filled. So I'll send that off to her now. Okay. That's too bad. Yeah. Okay. And um, um, I'm... Again, I'm going to table. I just have a few. I, I put in the inclusions in announcements, and really the announcements are um, Bob is wonderful at doing research and yeah. will often send me things like the US Access Board or the uh, ADA National Network newsletter, you know, all ways for us to continue to learn about the. Uh, the luminous amount of information around ADA issues. Um, and some are obviously very pertinent to things that are going on right now. So again, I'll table that to the next meeting if people wanna have a discussion about it, but in the meantime, I'll be happy to send the links so that people can read any information they would like. Can, can, I, can I say something about the last issue? Um, I'm thinking about Celeste, and I know that she teaches here in Greenfield. And this is a once a month, no? Am I wrong? She used to teach in Greenfield. She no longer teaches in Greenfield. Okay. All right. Okay. I had a grand idea, but now I'm going <laughs> to take it back that maybe the town could work with the town. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. So I'm going to uh, uh, adjourn the meeting to uh, 
stay on time here. <laughs> and um, I will uh, work with Bob tomorrow to get that off. Um, and just also just quickly, I get a call from the access specialist at Stavros who said he is happy to work with us at any point. Um, so he is very knowledgeable and another good resource. And he's very capable at reading blueprints and has a big computer. Um, so that's another nice connection that that we have. So he that's just great. happened to call me today. Yeah, just happened to call me today. Okay, so um, I'm gonna adjourn the meeting and um, just wanna thank you all and really thank Bob. It's, you did oh. an incredible job. Yeah. <laughs> it was a godsend. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion. Um, you want me to make a motion to adjourn? Please. I'm, I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Or second. Mayo. Okay. Any, any bet? All those in favor, huh? Hi. Hi. All right. Okay. Thank you very, very much. That was great.